Boruto Uzumaki is now 100% Otsuski. Huh? Yeah, you heard that right. Boruto is no longer human and is part of the alien Otsuski clan. Are you fucking dumb? Momoshiki confirmed this himself in chapter 67 of the Boruto manga. And here's how. Welcome back everyone and it's time to go bye. So to fully understand how Boruto was able to reach the position of becoming an Osusuki in the first place, we have to take a look into the Karma Seal, the thing that is responsible for everything that's currently happening right now to Boruto's body. The Karma is a compressed backup of an Otsuski clan member's biological data that can be implanted in the body of a suitable recipient known as a vessel. In this case, Momoshiki implanted his biological biological data into Boruto at the point of his death. When an Osusuki member is killed, their soul will migrate to one of their vessels and become anchored to the living world until their reincarnation has finished. However, surviving the process is often more difficult than it sounds. Ishiki was responsible for killing countless amounts of innocent people when trying to find himself a suitable vessel. The process can only be completed finding a very rare compatible host, otherwise the human in question will die by a violent seizure. Essentially what I'm trying to say here, uh, plot armor worked out and Momoshiki won the jackpot upon his death! Yeah! He do not care! This is because Boruto was a perfect vessel. Thus, the karma began to overwrite Boruto's genetic profile until all of his human DNA was eventually rewritten and replaced with Momoshiki's. This caused Boruto's human DNA to disappear from existence without a trial. Now, should the vessel die, that anchor keeping the Otsuski soul in the living world is lost, causing the Otsuski to completely die just like Ishiki for example. Ishiki Otsuski died because he no longer had a valid karma in the living world. Kawaki duped him into transferring data into a shadow clone, which meant that his soul could not reside in the living world, causing his death. Technically speaking, Otsuski are viewed as gods, and they refer to themselves as such. This is because they practically are immortal. The more chakra fruits they eat, the more power and expansion of their lifespan they receive, as they evolve by adding the genetic material and profile of that planet to their own. So even if Otsuski die, they can resurrect through other species. This is why Amado refers to them as parasites because this is a perfect description of their nature. The only reason Ishiki died was because Amado created a perfect clan with Konoha to weaken him and put him in a situation where he was for time. Ishiki did not know that Kawaki learned the Shadow Clone Jutsu, but if he did, he would still even be alive right now. This is exactly why Boruto and Kawaki have such a dark prophecy, as their ordinary lives as humans will never be a possibility. Boruto has essentially become immortal and a god per se if he practices the Otsuski clan's laws. Boruto can even access Otsuski clan dimensions, their ancient scrolls, that Kaguya or others left behind, and even Otsuski technology. Boruto has every single power Momoshiki would have, which means he can create his own vessel and can also eat chakra fruits. Orochimaru told us in the anime through his research that humans are not Bruh. able to eat chakra fruits as they would instantly die, as we see with Victor. On top of that, Kawaki did say that he should have the ability to create a vessel and resurrect. Boruto and Kawaki are now an Otsuski pair that resonate with each other. The reason this is important is because the Otsuski clan travel in pairs on their missions to harvest a planet's chakra fruit. They plant the tentails into the planet's ground which acts as a sapling. So subsequently it feeds on the life force energy of the planet and an Otsuski then has to be fed to it which will result in a god tree bearing a fruit. It is common practice for the members responsible to sacrifice their 
themselves to find a suitable host to bear their karma seal so that they can later be revived after they are eaten. This way the clan can continue being sustainable in their goals and existence. Now sometimes the transfer of the karma can fail as not every vessel is quite suitable. In some cases this results in a white karma as seen with code. As Ishiki points out those with a white karma are embedded with the will of the Otsuski and the legacy of the now dead Otsuski in the form of pure power. This is because the white karma is the byproduct of a vessel that is suitable enough to host the power of an Otsuski but not the data. This makes them a formidable weapon. The bearer of a white karma can cultivate the god tree and eat the fruit it bears, taking in that planet's entire record of life. By doing so they can result in becoming a completely new Otsuski. This way their race can still continue to fulfill their goal of devouring planets and evolving. As even if one dies, there's still a backup to the backup that will instead birth a completely new one. From there they can continue evolving until they eventually reach the point of becoming a god amongst gods as seen in chapter 55. However, with the events that happen in chapter 67 of Boruto, we learn that this isn't the only way that an entirely new Otsuski can be manifested through the Karma Seal. In chapter 66, Kawaki killed his brother Boruto after Momoshiki manifested and threatened Naruto's life. Now although Ishiki proved that even a dead body can act as a vessel by using Jigen since 100% of his data was extracted in that vessel, Momoshiki could not do this since the data extraction had not completed. Boruto was only at 82% complete. Kawaki had killed Boruto but that would mean Momoshiki had to intervene to save his vessel's life as it was his only option to stay anchored to the living world. Using his power, he managed to manipulate the karma seal to close off the wound in Boruto's chest and heal all the damage. Boruto's untimely death forced Momoshiki to convert the 18% of remaining human DNA into Otsuski data with the karma. This sacrificed his opportunity to reincarnate but at least stay living. Now, since this final chunk of data was Boruto's, it meant his body accepted it instantly, reforming his cells and tissue, subsequently reviving him. This is how the final 18% extracted so quickly compared to the usual speed of extraction, as it was just a case of Boruto being turned into Boruto again, rather than, you know, Boruto being turned into a whole new person. Although 18% was converted with Boruto's DNA, it is still done so by utilizing Otsuski data. The way we like to picture it is like this. If you take a photo and it is a PNG file but you then convert it into a JPEG file, there are differences in quality. However, it's still a photo at the end of the day and functions in the same manner, displaying the same image. So all that happened is that Momoshiki's data is the PNG and it was converted into Boruto's which is the JPEG. The contents of it however is still Otsuski data at the core of it all. Momoshiki gave up on reviving himself because dying is a worse option. Obviously speaking, he knows Boruto's prophecy, which means he wants to see how events unfold to the very end so that he can torture the human race as long as possible. He could also be reserving information from Boruto regarding Otsuski knowledge, as Boruto only became an official member recently. Therefore, the story would need Momoshiki to explain alien plot points that progress the journey further. The question is though, why did Momoshiki do this? Well, um, why else? Because he's an evil bastard? <laughs> why else? I mean, did you not see him laugh like crazy when Boruto asked about his prophecy? <laughs> Now the question in our entire community's mind is this, what is this prophecy? I asked our community what you think. Yes, you. Look at all these responses. You, 
you, yes you, can't forget about you, and all of our members. Like this guy, he's got a Hokage icon and shit, supporting our channel for a very long time. Please consider buying our clothing, become a member, you know, it's only $2.99 a month and you can join our private discord. We need members because I like money. No, it's not that, it's because it makes our videos possible. Haven't you guys noticed we upload 7 different series onto the channel on a consistent basis? So please consider it and also hit the notification bell for our channel. Now in regards to the time skip and Boruto's prophecy, when the story first began years ago, Kishimoto the creator stated in an interview, I wanted the start of the manga to be happy, but I also wanted to show that there's a dark turning point that's coming. One example of his dark turn could be along the lines of this theory from, um, am I even gonna try and pronounce this name? <laughs> I'm not even gonna try it, bro. But basically, they theorized that in the time skip where Konoha has been completely annihilated and the world was sent into chaos, it could be all Kawaki's doing. A world where Kawaki has become a dictator and created a new Konoha. A Konoha that Boruto is trying to stop. Now, obviously, this is possible because of Kawaki's power level, which we covered in great detail in a previous video. Make sure to check it out after this one. Now, to back up this point, big old green hair made an excellent point that adds into the post-apocalyptic Konoha theory. He says how he thinks Boruto could be driven out of the village due to him being 100% pure Otsuski now. After all, if this news was ever to be made public somehow, maybe through some political leaking by someone like Amado, such news can be drastic, as we have seen how the people of Konoha reacted when rumors of Kawaki's story began to spread. He felt completely unwanted. So if Boruto was subsequently driven out of the village for the same reason, the impact this would have on Naruto would be tremendous. He just watched his kid die for the safety of his village and in return he has been kicked out. This could be the catalyst to make Kawaki try and bring about a change to the shinobi structure and attempt to rebuild it. After all, we know how far Kawaki will go to keep his father Naruto safe. This could lead Kawaki to learn more about the past sacrifices that have been made in the village under the disguise as the shinobi way. For example, when Kakashi had to kill Rin, or even the Uchiha clan massacre. After coming to understand the tales of war and the sacrifice that the village is built upon, Kawaki may finally decide to revolutionize it all just like Sasuke tried to. This would be to erase the era of shinobi. This ties perfectly into his backstory. Kawaki was utilized by others his entire life and if he witnesses this in Konoha once again by them doing the same thing to Boruto or Naruto he would want to change it. In the anime the world isn't all sunshine and rainbows like some of you would like to believe that uh, pfft. I've seen those memes, trust me. What I'm trying to say is, if you actually do watch the anime and don't skip it, you can witness that even after the success of the fourth shinobi war, smaller towns on the outskirts of the larger nation still suffer from famine and war. And so it's very believable that in the eyes of some people, the world will not truly be safe until shinobi in general have been eradicated on the planet. But since we are anime bulls deep after all, you should know by now that the video doesn't end here. In fact, we have substantial evidence that the pure eye, otherwise known as the Jogon, is directly linked to the dark prophecy Momoshiki mentioned in chapter 67. Harrison will proceed with explaining it and don't, I, 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 I better not see you guys typing again because I've seen some of you do this. You're still commenting quacky 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 with the duck emoji. Yo, that shit's still funny. <laughs> you guys are hilarious, but yeah, Harrison gone. Thanks Adil. What does Karaki's eventual turn on the Shinobi way mean for Boruto's predetermined destiny? Now, this is a very interesting theory. People have been speculating that eventually everybody who Boruto loves are going to die, or at least that's what most people tend to understand from Momoshiki's work. And in chapter 67 of the manga, this becomes more apparent. As Momoshiki states that Boruto 
Zoro's death was nothing compared to what's actually going to come, implying that he isn't going to suffer directly, it's his loved ones who will suffer in turn casting him pain. After all, the only thing worse than the pain of your own death is the pain you feel when the ones you love die. Sidant, and apologies for butchering your name probably, predicts that Naruto will be sealed and that the rest of his family will die during the Konoha attack, solidifying his destiny. Now whilst most people are generally looking forward to the moment when Boruto turns dark, it is important to remember that extreme care needs to be taken when executing such a turn in a story. Simply throwing in deaths of important characters doesn't make a story dark, all it does is make it edgy and pretentious. With that said though, I do think that it is a strong possibility and if executed well can be an amazing direction for the story to move in. Now then, on the topic of amazing directions for the story, the question every Boruto fan asks is, what will Boruto's pure Aido Jutsu mean in all of this? If you are unaware of what the Jogan is, then let me explain it for you real quick. The Jogan is an ancient dojutsu belonging to the Otsutsuki clan. Apparently it's an extremely rare dojutsu to possess, so rare in fact that Otsutsukis get shocked when they see one. The canon explanation that we have so far is that Boruto received strong Otsutsuki genetics through Naruto and Hinata having chakra from both Hagoromo and Hamura Otsutsuki. Naruto in his lineage is connected to Hagoromo and is his son's reincarnation, whilst Hinata's genetics of the Hyuga and possessing the Byakugan is directly linked to Hamura and the Otsutsuki. This can be proven with Momoshiki seeing Boruto's pure eye active and before he transferred the karma, stating, I see you have inherited Otsutsuki genetics. On top of all that, the pure eye has a connection with Tonori Otsutsuki, manipulating the situation for it to happen. He acts as an accelerant for the Jogan's awakening. Urushiki addressed this with Toneri before sealing him away where he stated that he did something to that woman's child, making his first move against the Otsutsuki clan. This is why Toneri is such a mysterious but prominent figure in Boruto's prophecy. After Naruto the last, he switched sides and became a good guy, wanting to preserve life on earth. Toneri believes this is possible through Boruto, making sure that the Star of Hope can protect earth with the pure eye that is connected to the Yotsutsuki clan that plan to invade. After all, we know from his interaction with Urashiki that Toneri does not uphold the same stereotypical ideology of the main branch of the clan. He even stated in episode 8 to Boruto directly through his dreams that your eye is the star of hope. The power of hope slumbers deep within you against the destruction that will eventually come to pass. Urashiki in the anime also looked into Boruto's prophecy and started laughing, stating that it is very interesting. So there's now three Otsutsuki predicting a destructive and dark future coming Boruto's way. However, Momoshiki says that it's his blue eyes that will take away everything, whereas Teneri on the other hand says that it's his eye that is the star of hope that will defeat the evil that comes his way. So which is it? Well this actually perfectly ties into what the real life inspiration is behind the pure eye, that being the evil eye. Whilst many believe that the evil eye is a curse, others believe that it is a supernatural power that reflects a malicious stare back to those who wish others harm, perfectly befitting the two futures which Toneri and Momoshiki foresaw. This makes the hype around the Jogan even greater as it potentially sets up Boruto to become the most overpowered character in this series, by utilising this one of a kind Otsutsuki Dojutsu. The Jogan can allow Boruto to see chakra paths and also see the emotions of others dwelling inside a person, much like how Naruto can sense the true emotions of the people around him. Even more than that though, it even has the ability to see through invisible barriers that connect between different dimensions as seen when Boruto was able to predict where Urashiki would appear from whilst moving between portals. There is much more to come than that though I am sure, after all there's a reason Teneri left such an immense power in the hands of Boruto, as he trusts that he has what it takes to dispel the threat of the Otsutsuki for good. Even Urashiki labelled his Jogan as a problem when he realised that Boruto wielded it. In fact, Toneri gifted Boruto with such an insane eye that it even resulted in Toneri being sealed away for 10,000 years.
Urushiki actually stated that if it wasn't for the fact that it was against clan rules, he would have actually killed Teneri for what he did. Which only goes to highlight how big of a deal it is that we are talking about. We even saw that the Otsutsuki god that Ishiki envisions in chapter 55 of the manga seems to bear countless amounts of Jogan. So if this eye is OP enough for even God himself to have his own fair share, it shows how broken and integral to the plot it must be. However, Boruto has only been able to use it involuntarily for now and for only a short amount of time at that. But as we clearly saw from episode one though, Boruto seemingly will learn to eventually control it at will. Either way, there's a possibility that since Boruto is essentially 100% Otsutsuki now, he might be able to activate the Jogan voluntarily after a little bit of training. And now that Boruto's karma has finished extracting and the risk of Mamashiki's resurrection taking over Boruto's body is gone, the story can now begin to shift towards Boruto's next major power-up after the time skip, which would of course be the Joker. Because we know that it will return to the story eventually and that it plays a massive role, despite the manga not focusing on it at all yet. The anime though has heavily focused on it from time to time and Teneri even stated how its timer won't be coming up for a while, all but confirming that it was always planned to be a late game time skip power up for Boruto. And despite Teneri being sealed away, we did get a tease from the director of the Boruto <gasps> anime Koda on Twitter that his story will one day resume. Just he never had to go out of his way to answer a fan like this, but he still did. He truly is the GOAT. Anyway, we can all expect that sooner rather than later, by piecing together all of the clues and making logical sense of how the Boruto story is structured that Toneri and the Jogan itself will return to the story as a major part of Boruto's dark prophecy. And once the rest of the main branch of the family learn that he has mastered this power, they will act upon it as someone outside of their clan has gained their power. Something they clearly didn't want to happen as they sent Urashiki to clean up Toneri's mess. And we all know how that ended up. But we do know that two other Otsutsuki are still yet to be properly explored in the series and were purposely shown to us on the Otsutsuki mural for a reason. Therefore, they may play a large role in Boruto's fate once the clan catches wind of who he truly is now that he is actually, by definition, one of them. A pure Otsutsuki. That being said though, one thing on everyone's mind now that Mamashiki can't resurrect anymore and is eternally anchored to Boruto is what kind of relationship will they have? Well, we asked you guys to let us know what kind of relationship you want, and here is what you have to say. After the current events of the manga, many people were quick to speculate that Momoshiki would play a similar role to that of Sukuna in Jujutsu Kaisen. If you still haven't watched Jujutsu Kaisen, then first of all, why? But second of all, and most importantly, don't worry. What people basically mean is that Momoshiki will become a goddamn menace in Boruto's life. Just like Sukuna is for Itadori. Sukuna, you see, lives inside Itadori's body since the time Itadori ate one of Sukuna's cursed fingers to save a friend. Sukuna, the king of curses, knows how to annoy and or petrify someone. Itadori in fact once mentioned that Sukuna keeps talking to him all night, preventing him from having a good night's sleep. We've also witnessed Sukuna mock Itadori countless times, resulting in a lot of mental distress. Sukuna has killed countless people too, causing more pain to Itadori. And this this ties back to the theory that Momoshiki will be the cause behind the death of people close to Boruto. If this actually happens, then it will definitely be the darkest and some of the most heartbreaking scenes in the entire series. Boruto will have to face constant nightmares and deal with the pain of hurting his loved ones over and over again. In the anime canon episodes, we saw that Boruto didn't sleep for days because he was afraid that Momoshiki would take over his body since he's not conscious and thus hurt his family. Just imagine what Boruto would go through if Momoshiki kept berating, threatening and targeting Boruto, especially at night when he's completely alone. If a loved one that Boruto ends up hurting calls him a monster or something like that out of anger and sadness, then it will stick with Boruto for a while, making him wonder if he even deserves to live or not. Again, this is only the surface of what Momoshiki could potentially do to make Boruto's life a misery. While it may seem like Boruto would be copying Jujutsu Kaisen if it were to show 
show Momoshiki is a menace too, that is far from the truth. There are countless things that can be done with this direction creatively, making it one of the most plausible and interesting routes for the Boruto story to take. But if you want to know more about the Otsutsuki clan, then I highly recommend that you watch the video being displayed to you right now, where we explain the entire Otsutsuki family. Trust me, you won't regret it.